Hello and welcome to PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Metro Conference Volleyball in the San Diego section. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Southwest High School in San Diego, California. I'm Brian Vilvin with Thomas Conroy on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. This afternoon's matchup features the visiting Castle Park Trojans against the host Southwest Raiders. Castle Park comes in today's game with an overall record of 2-1, and one, while the home team, Southwest, is 8-4. and four. And Thomas, when you look at those records, Castle Park having only played three matches this season and Southwest playing 12, you got to think that favors the Southwest Raiders in this one. Yeah, we talked to, to the head coach of the Southwest High School before this contest, and uh, he, he planned it that way. He had a tournament right at the beginning of the season. He got five games because he felt that he, he had a very young squad. Ten were in JV uh, last season, so he wanted to build them a little cohesiveness at the varsity level, and he said he accomplished that well going 3-2 and two in the Marv in the Monte Vista tournament at the beginning of the season. And that's a, a really prestigious tournament down here in the South Bay. The Met Metro Conference action just getting underway. And Coach Bellino said, yeah, he wanted to focus the tournament competition at the beginning of the season and then during league just focus on league play. So they've already finished their entire non-league slate. And from here on out, it's league opponents. Yeah, and, and, and he feels that that's going to help them with their concentration level and also their familiarity by, by going all the schools with, within and around here at Southwest High School. The Castle Park Trojans started off the season with a tough loss against a good team from Mesquite, Arizona, uh, a volleyball powerhouse. And then they've looked very strong in their last two matches, getting a, a couple of big wins. As a visiting team on the road in league play, Thomas, how important is game number one for Castle Park tonight? I think it's extremely because it sets the tone, keeping the, the, the crowd kind of quiet, not allowing a, them to get a home, home court advantage. So it's very imperative for them to get that, fir that first game win underneath their belt and then really have Southwest kind of play from behind for the rest of the match. Well, we'll see if the Trojans can get off to the hot start that they need here on the road at Southwest. Folks, that's going to do it for the PlayOnSports.com pregame show. We'll be back with the first serve in just a few minutes. San Diego Metro, Metro Conference Volleyball begins next on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. 
can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard uh, graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a... Welcome back to Metro Conference Volleyball coverage on playonsports.com. Coming to you live from San Diego, California, I'm Brian Vilvin with Thomas Conroy on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. This afternoon's matchup features two South Bay League teams squaring off as the 2-1 Castle Park Trojans visit the 8-4 Southwest Raiders. And Thomas, we talked about it a little bit in the opening, the Castle Park Trojans coming on the road playing against an already very experienced Southwest Raider team. This game one's going to be very important for the visitors, Castle Park. Yeah, it kind of sets the tone for everybody here inside the, the gymnasium. Uh, you want to keep that, that, that home crowd silent here in the first game if you can get that, that one-game lead. And it really puts a lot of pressure on, on, the, on the home squad. 
that now they, they will have to win the next two to get, to get an advantage and, and then possibly get that, that, that home court advantage back. So it's, it's very imperative for this Castle Park team to win that first game. Well, we got both teams on the floor right now getting hyped up for their matchup. The Castle Park Trojans on the right side of your screen with the black uniforms, white numbering, and red trim. The Southwest Raiders with the white jerseys, maroon numbers with yellow trim. And it's going to be the Southwest Raiders that will serve to Castle Park. As we are just about underway here, Metro Conference volleyball coverage in the South Bay League here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Brian Vilvin and Thomas Conroy coming to you live from Southwest High School, home of the Raiders, and getting things started for the Southwest Raiders, Jessica Uloa, the junior for Southwest, and she'll be the first to serve. Passed in the middle. The set's going to go outside to Jocelyn Rojas. Nicely dug. That was Deira Ibarra. And in transition, it's Nicole Jacobo. Free ball going to be coming here. And the Southwest Raiders let that one hit the ground. A little bit of miscommunication from Southwest on that first play. Point Castle Park. Yeah, Gabrielle De DeVira right there did not communicate with, with the front line and let that ball drop right in front of her. That's a crucial missed shot there. Maya Lida with the serve, and she gives it right back to the Raiders as that one goes into the net, and we're square at one here in game one. Best of five match between Southwest and Castle Park. First one to win three games wins the match. Yeah, but mine didn't look confident on that, on that serve there. Sampson with the pass. The over ball knocked by Gabrielle Devera, and a free ball is coming to the Raiders. The set goes outside to Ibarra, and Ibarra puts it away. The junior captain, Deira Ibarra, smashing it from the outside, and the Raiders have their first lead of the match. I think they ruled that out. And the Trojans keep the lead with that one, and we've got our first service ace of the game. Nicely done on the serve by Jocelyn Rojas. So I, I didn't see what that call was there on that, Thomas. That was a late call. I just noticed the, the, the official right next to us. He put his hand up for a point for Castle Park. Another tough serve by Rojas, and the Trojans are going to have a shot at it. Instead, they'll give a free ball to Southwest. Set right side, big swing by Marin Cabal, and the Trojans let it sail long. They have their biggest lead of the match, 4-1. to one with Rojas still at the line. And this is where you gotta watch folks for the, the team to kind of go on a run here with the, with the nice service volley. And then definitely here, Rojas, she's picking it up the pace. Rojas is just hammering her serve, a float serve, but just skipping it over the net, so tough to pass. And she rips another one. <laughs> the libero, Marianne Pato, having some trouble with that for Southwest, but the Raiders catch a break as Castle Park hits it into the net and the Raiders have a side out. They trail by three, and at the service line, it'll be Gabrielle Devara. Yeah, it looked like Kanisha Sampson didn't have good footwork there, and she hit it into the net for Castle Park. Devara hits her serve into the net, so the team's exchanging service errors. Nakina Jackson with the serve here now for Castle Park. Jackson. Passed by the Raiders and a big swing on the right-hand side by Cabal, a senior captain, the right-side hitter for Southwest, and she hits it long. So nice patience here by Castle Park, letting the ball sail long from the back row defenders. Yeah, they seem to have to know exactly where that back line is, and they don't go after for really long shots. Ball kept alive by Castle Park. They'll give a free ball back to the Raiders. Set outside. Nice dig by Jackson. But it falls to the floor, and Deira Ibarra is going to have her second kill of the match. Yeah, it looked like it's going to be Kanisha Sampson there. It was a little bit out of place after that shot by Jackson. Wasn't expecting it coming towards her, and she could not rebound to get that shot uh, for a third opportunity for Castle Park. Melanie Ramos will serve for the Raiders. Set's going to go to the right-hand side. Cut shot, nice swing, and a kill by... Janika Abagat, and Castle Park has an 8-3 lead. Yeah. 
quite confidence, I feel, right now from Castle Park. They have a good lead, and, and they feel very confident with their service. Janica Abagat will serve again. 50-50 ball at the net, still alive. Nice hustle play going in there. Jocelyn Rojas seemed like the only player on the court to not give up on the play. <laughs> and it almost worked out for Castle Park. Instead, the Raiders will get it. Yeah, Sarah Montone just stepped out of the way because she did not want to double hit that uh, that ball right there as she initially hit it into the net. So that was smart by her, but nobody came up to help her out. Nice pass by Sampson. She's going to get a set Ooh. two ball in the middle, and she smashes it still alive. And I think there was a double contact there. Mm. Marianne Pato tried to get out of the way there, but on the short ceiling here at Southwest High School, came right back down and got her. Yeah, that's what happened. She, she made a nice save on a, a nice dig on, on Sampson's kill, and it just unfortunately hit one of the pipes here high above the ceiling. The Trojans getting out to that early need that they lead that they so desperately needed here on the road against an experienced Southwest team, service ace Kanisha Sampson. And the Trojans have a 10-4 to 4 lead. First team to double digits is Castle Park here on the road. Castle Park coached by Aaron Parch. The Southwest Raiders coached by Mark Bellino. Set to the middle. Swing by Jocelyn Meza. Free ball coming for the Raiders. And the team's exchanging free balls. Sampson with the pass. The set's going to go outside to Rojas. And Rojas with a nice swing. But it's kept alive by Southwest. They hit it into the net. Castle Park gets the serve back. Kanisha Sampson will continue serving, and it looks like the Trojans are going to try to go to Jocelyn Rojas as often as possible. Yeah, and, and right there on, the, on, that, on that little volley right there, I thought a great play by both sides. Unfortunate for the Raiders to get the ball into the net. And the coaches were saying before the match, passing was going to be so important. And Coach Mark Bellino does not like the passing he's seeing from Southwest. They trail by 8, 12 to 4 here in game one on PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Metro Conference Volleyball. PlayOnSports.com is your destination for high school sports. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, Go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Brian Vilbin and Thomas Conroy coming to you live from Southwest High School, the home of the Raiders, where the Southwest Raiders find themselves trailing Castle Park 12-4 here in game one. The Raiders came into today's match with an 8-4 overall record, while the Trojans of Castle Park just 2-1, only playing three matches on the young season. Kanisha Sampson at the service line for the Trojans. And Coach Bellino kept his team on in, in, in the huddle a little bit longer than anticipated, but I got a feeling just talking with him that he's a fiery coach. If he doesn't see anything he likes, he's going he's gonna to address it immediately. The set goes outside to Nicole Hackabo, and Hackabo with a kill. A much-needed side out for the Raiders. Let's see if they can't get something going on their serve. Yeah, another ball that hit the top of the ceiling and it kind of took a weird angle. And Castle Park could not react to it quickly enough. A substitution for the Raiders. We've got Jacqueline Chulico into the game. She will serve, replacing Jocelyn Meza. Chulico with the service ace. Nicely done. A little spark off the bench for Southwest. And they trail by six. Yeah, that time miscommunication on the back row right there. Looked like somebody was going to try to come back and in the last second move forward, and that just fell right in front of the lone saver there, uh, Mendoza, I believe. Giving her body up was Rojas, but she's unable to keep the ball in play, and again, that's Chulico putting a lot of pressure on with that serve and getting Southwest right back into game one. Yeah, great, great, great play to bring her into this game. She's come up now with a couple of points here off a service volley. The officials, I don't know what happened, trying to get the benches sorted out for both sides. Everything's set, and Chulico will serve again. This one goes wide, so Castle Park dodges a bullet there getting out of the Chulico serve, and the Trojans will serve. Their lead is six. I guess he had a problem with Castle Park, but they only have three players on the bench. It's not that hard to figure who comes in and who comes out, I don't believe. 
Sarah Bolas serving oh, and a nice. powerful ace right down the line by Sarah Bolas. So another service change there and Bolas comes in, ace right off the bat. But I love the velocity right down the line, as you said, the far line. And it was a tough shot for Southwest to play. Right on that same spot again. And the Raiders have some trouble with it. That was Melanie Ramos unable to keep that one up. But again, the pressure, Sarah Bolas coming in and two monster serves right off the bat. Yeah, service is coming in rather fast and it's hard to react. And that's what's happening right now to the, to the Raiders. That one went right to the back line. It's going to be a free ball for Castle Park. Southwest hits the free ball long. And that's three straight points for the Trojans after giving up a few on the other end. So great response by the visitors. Another big serve, Bolas. She's come into the game and completely changed the landscape. Rojas with a swing. Was there a touch? No touch. The ball sails long. Powerful attempt, but it's going to be a side out for Southwest. Yeah, it looked like Rojas sort of gave it up to Sampson. She, had, she was better positioned for the kill right there. A little mi miscommunication. Cassandra Hernandez back into the game for Southwest. Jessica Uloa will serve. Free ball to the Raiders. Set goes outside. That's Hakobo and no signal from the official yet on what the call is. Uh oh, they're gonna. They the officials will talk about it here. I like to see them talk about mm -hmm. it though and make sure that they get the correct call. Yeah, it's always good to, to, to see. They kind of discuss what you saw, and then uh, on the other side of the court to see what it, what the other official. He's a little bit higher up than the uh, than the uh, than the, the official who stands on on court. There's a chance they'll do a replay here. If the official puts two thumbs up in the air, that means a replay. They didn't see exactly what happened. Now they'll talk to the lines people to see if they saw. I think the question here is, the ball hit the antenna, whether it came off of the attack or off of a block. So which team was the last one to hit it into the antenna? And if nobody saw it definitively, then we'll get a replay and the score will stay the same. The officials yet to call it. Here comes this ruling right now. Saying it was a touch off of Castle Park, so Southwest will get the point. So that's what we were wondering about. And he says that Nicole Hackabo, somebody out there saw that she hit it into the Castle Park block and then into the antenna. So nice job with the officials congregating and getting the call correct. And, and no argument from Castle Park, so that they agree with the recall. And he served just gets over Ooh. the tape. Nice job even keeping that alive by Castle Park. Lida keeping that one alive for the Trojans. And a big swing on the right-hand side. That was Hernandez just into the game and ripping. And now Hakobo puts it down for Southwest. So the Raiders kind of use that as a, a chance to get some momentum back to their side when they get a call after a long delay going their way. Now they trail by six points and are looking to cut into that lead. Jessica Uloa still at the service line. This one goes well long, and the Trojans will get the side out. Yeah, unfortunately, they couldn't get in a little bit more momentum on that. One more point, and, uh, and, and that they would have they would have started because of the attention of Castle Park as another tough serve by Lita. And Maya Lita just Excuse me, Lida. served that one into the net. That's the second one she's served mm -hmm. into the net, so she appears frustrated out there, but the Setter is going to need to continue making plays. If she misses her serves but continues to set the ball nicely all over the court, they're going to be okay with that. Yeah, she seems to be the, 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 lone, the lone Castle Park player that has a hard time serving right now. The set's going to go to the middle. Nicely done there. A big attack by Nikina Jackson, but kept alive by the Raiders. Down ball comes to Castle Park. They'll have to get a free ball back to Southwest. Uloa. Dishes the middle and a big swing in the middle by Gabrielle Devera, but it goes long. So the Trojans will send the tough serving Jocelyn Rojas back to the line. They lead by seven, looking to take game one. They're seven points away from doing so. Big serve mm. again by Rojas, and the Raiders had no chance on that one. Yeah, once it hit the top of the ceiling, it came down, and as you said, extremely fast, and it's just hard to react when when you get that kind of boomerang effect off the ceiling. Jocelyn Rojas again rips a serve, no <laughs> chance. When it goes that <laughs> close off or over the tape, it's almost <laughs> impossible as a defender to pass that ball. 
And right now, Southwest is having trouble with that. They knew that passing and hard serves would be the key for them. Passing, like serve, receive, and tough serving. And right now, Castle Park's doing a great job of both yeah, of those. They just seem like with that service, with the velocity, they just seem one step off of, of making a shot. Big block at the net by Sampson, and the Castle Park lead is 10. The first double-digit lead for the Trojans, and they're in control here in game one. Great anticipation by by Kenesha Sampson. They get, it, they get up there and kill that ball over as it was coming over the net. Rojas serves again. Service ace. Rojas, we don't have an official number on this, but I think she's been at the line 8 to 10 points here in game one. Yeah, you look at it. Rojas and, 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 and Bolas have really shown a, a couple of aces. I think they both have the, about the same amount of aces right here, but obviously the second time for Rojas, she's really putting on a number here. And another one. Wow, Jocelyn Rojas is putting on a clinic on how to do some damage with your float serve. And she will serve again for the Trojans. They lead 23-11, two points away from taking game one. Let's make it one as Rojas has a third consecutive ace. And Jocelyn Rojas looking to close this one out by herself. Yeah, and that back line for the Raiders is just having a hard time just, getting, just moving over, to even position themselves to even get something towards the front of the net. Rojas with the jump serve, and she rips that in the court as well. The set goes to the middle, and it's blocked. Nice double block by Nikita Jackson and Kenesha Sampson, and the Castle Park Trojans in complete control here in game one. They win it 25-11. to As we head into the second game, it's going to be something for Southwest to control that serve, but right now, Castle Park in control. They took game one 25 11 on playonsports.com, your destination for high school sports. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information to links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the, all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. PlayOnSports.com not only is your destination for high for Friday night football action, but it's also a place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com. High school sports lives here. Brian Vilvin and Thomas Conroy bringing you the action from Southwest High School where the Castle Park Trojans were just dominant in game one, taking game one 25 to 11 on the Southwest home floor. So yeah, I, we I, talked about they need to come out fast here in game one. They did a great job of that. Yeah, excuse me. It was, it was two really performers service-wise, Rojas and Bolas. They did an outstanding job with the velocity of their service. And then I thought in uh, right in front of the net, Sampson and, and Jackson really played well there putting the ball, just killing the ball right in the middle of the court. Southwest in, in this second game now is really going to have to find out a way to, to kind of control that service and, and send it over the net because uh, right now you're going to sense that Castle Park felt confident coming into this match, and now the, they're going to take it to the next level as they just dominated the second part of that match. Remember at one point, uh, at one point uh, Brian, it was 16-10, Castle Park, and then it was a, it was a shot that went long, that made it 17-10, and then after that, Southwest only scored one more point in the match as they lost it 25 to 11. And the serving was so tough for Castle Park. They had Sarah Bolas come in, rip off a bunch of serves, and then Jocelyn Rojas do the same. So it's, it'll be interesting to see how Southwest responds here. They did a nice job when they were able to pass the serve. Mm -hmm. It just didn't happen often enough to have success. Yeah, I think they, I think there's got to be a little bit more communication with the front and back line there to kind of set it up there, so the, so then they they could kind of service that that those high powered shots maybe towards the middle of the court and then work it that way over the net. The teams are on the court. The officials are checking the lineups to make sure that everything is set. The Castle Park Trojans will serve to start game two, and that's something that they've got to like. Maya Lida at the service line. She's the only one who hasn't made a serve yet for Castle Park, and I'm 
sure she'll get this one in for that exact reason. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't very confident in, in the first game with her, with her service, but other than that, her other part of the of, of, of her volleyball game was tremendous in that in that first uh, in that first set win. Yeah, as the setter for the Trojans, she really makes everything click on offense, and she's doing a great job, whether or not it's at the service mm -hmm. line. And uh, I gotta I gotta imagine that she's gonna have a little run here at the line here in game two. And this one goes in and causes trouble service ace. <laughs> so take that as Maya Lida gets right into the game that Castle Park has been playing so far, and that's tough serving. Yeah, uh, Daira Ibarra, the captain for Southwest, had a hard time with that shot, and it went off to the side. And there goes another point. Two straight aces, and Castle Park is right back to where they left off in game one. They lead it two to nothing. But more importantly for the Trojans, they are just dominating at the service line. Yeah, Pado right there let it, went it off her hands and out of bounds. And again, they have some trouble with it, but it lands on the Castle Park side. So the Raiders dodge a bullet there as they get the side out. And it will be their setter, Jessica Uloa, the junior setter for Southwest. It'll serve, start things off at the service line for the Raiders. Give Cassandra your hand. Hernandez, the point there for Southwest. The set goes to the middle, and a big swing by Devera kept alive, and a 50-50 ball at the net slammed by Nicole Jacobo, and the ball's still in play. Nice job by the Trojans just keeping that one alive. Set to the right-hand side, free ball to Castle Park. And they go to Rojas, who hits it long. Great patience there by the Southwest defense, and court awareness, knowing where they are and letting that ball go long. Yeah, and I like both teams. Great great spacing and positioning on the court as that was a ferocious volley by both teams. Could have went either way the point. The server Uloa. And a free ball is coming to Southwest. The set goes outside Hakobo and Hakobo puts it down so the Southwest Raiders have their first lead of the match and it comes at 3-2 here in game two. So important to respond. The score's 0-0 zero, zero to start game two, so it doesn't matter what happened in game one. If you're Southwest, you've got to remember that. Yeah, ever since they, they broke the service volley of Castle Park, they've been on a nice run here. The set goes to the middle, and it's put away Nakima Jackson. What a set by Lida, and Jackson does the rest. Side out for the Trojans. Yeah. Great setup by her back line to give her great positioning so she could kill that ball right in the middle of the court on Southwest. The serve goes into the net, and it's so important for Southwest that they just got Rojas away from the service line. She missed her serve, so the Raiders got a chance to respond here. Hakobo at the line, and let's see if they can't go on a little run of their own. And Hakobo responds with a service ace. The Raiders lead 5-3, to three, and Hakoba will continue serving. Yeah, boy, she really caught surprise there. Sampson wasn't in position to, to make that return volley and went right off her hand and out of bounds. The serve is on the way. Nice set at the net. And a swing and a kill by Kanisha Sampson. Maya Lido went up to the highest point and put the ball on the money to the outside. And then Sampson with a little tip that finds the floor for a point for Castle Park. Yeah, Kanisha's not happy with herself. She wanted a better kill, but she'll take the point because that means service back to the Trojans. Yeah, there are times when you smash a ball and it gets blocked or you hit it out, but then if you just tap it like that and you get the point, like in baseball, you know, you'll take a, a butt <laughs> single or any way to get on base. They all look like hits in the column at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody keeps them judged. We're all tied up at five apiece. It's Nikina Jackson at the service line. Nice pass by the libero Pata for Southwest. And we've got a back row attack by the Raiders. The setter was coming from the back row. And Castle Park will have the lead once again, six to five here in game two. They took game one, 25 to 11, looking to extend their match lead to two games to nothing. But don't tell that to Deira Ibarra. Ibarra back into the game. She had a couple of early kills for Southwest there in game one, and she evens the score here in game two at six apiece. Yeah, nice play by the captain there. Put it in the far corner, and boy, that was a tough shot, and she got the point. 
Gabrielle Devera serving. The Trojans have some trouble with it. They're going to have to give a free ball back to Southwest. Pass by Chulico. And Chulico gets the ball on the money to Cassandra Hernandez, who puts it down. And Southwest looks like a different team here in game two. Yeah, a lot, a lot of talking by the coach I was noticing in between, uh, in, in between sets there. So he had a lot to say. And you know, we mentioned it earlier. He seems like the type of coach who, if he sees something he doesn't like on the court, he addresses it immediately, does not let it fester too long. The swing goes wide. Sarah Bolas hit that one long, and Southwest leads. Gabrielle Devera still at the line, 8-6, the Raider lead. And I think sometimes you can win a, a set too, too easily that you kind of lose concentration. I think that's what's happening right here to the Trojans. Big swing on the outside and kept alive. What a dig by Uloa. Best rally of the match so far. A ball passed by Garisa Abdin and a big swing on the outside by Deira Ibarra, but it goes long and the Trojans get the point. Tough break there because she was set up perfectly, put a little bit too much on the ball and it went out of bounds. The serve by Janica Abagat and Ooh. a big block at the net. Sarah Bolas up there stuffing it back to the southwest side. We've been talking about Sarah's uh, uh, service, but that time, nice play right on the net. So she's got a kill and a block here in game two to go along with a number of points from the service line in game one. So Bolas having a nice match as the Raiders have trouble controlling that one. It goes back to Castle Park, and Janica Abagat will continue to serve for the Trojans. They lead 9-8 here in game two. Great pass by Hernandez. The set's going to go to the middle, and a nice swing on the two ball by Ibarra. And Sampson responds, what a dig, and credit the dig and kill to Southwest. Marianne Pato coming in and making a play for the Raiders. Yeah, Bolas and Sampson went, both went up for the ball. Neither one of them hit it. Got to have communication. Uh, Brian, we've, we've talked about that in any sport. No communication, and you're, gonna, you're, you're prone to the, the really uh, bad mistakes. The ball just a little bit too high for the Trojans. The set goes outside, Rojas smashes it, but a nice dig again. That's Pato making a play for the Raiders. Yeah, Pato was afraid that it was gonna hit the end line. She hit it, she made a nice, nice play. Set outside, and Ibarra puts a good swing on it. Kept alive, nicely done by Bolas. Middle attack, and it goes long. just long by Chilico, and the Trojans win that rally. Wow, give it all the credit to Bolas right there because that was a last second save as her shot was uh, kind of off balance and just went right over the net for that for the start of that point. Nice job jumping in by the libero, Stephanie Legault for Castle Park, making a play and a big swing on the outside. Deira Ibarra puts it down for the Raiders. Yeah, she seems to be setting herself up nicely now here. Good position with, with, her, with her feet. They get a lot of power on that shot, and it's been an awful tough dig for Castle Park, and they could not get it that time. Ibarra put that one down with authority, and now she goes to the service line. Maybe a little bit jacked up that time <laughs> as she serves it just wide. But well, that was uh, probably the biggest swing of the match so far. Yeah, excuse me. She looked like she wanted to get the far corner on that service. That's a little bit too tight of a shot there, and she just went a little bit too long. Sarah Bolas at the line, and she serves this one. No signal from the officials. They say that one's out. <laughs> Coach Parch does not like the call. The officials will talk it over. The line judge did not give a call. so And it bounced right in front of him. I thought he would be the first one to give a call. Well, the down ref, if he saw that one, he can overrule anything that the line judge says, but it should be the line judge's call. And they're going to say that one was out of bounds. I believe that'll be the call that they come up with. Replay. Instead, we're getting a replay. So Wow. Surprising, Brian, because I thought the, the last time we had a conference, I thought that would have been a replay because yeah. it looked very hard. This, this one seemed a little yeah. more clear cut. Yeah. But instead, Bolas will still be at the line. This one goes in. And a dump by the setter, Uloa. 
They'll get the ball back. Set goes outside to Jacobo. And Nicole Jacobo puts it down. So Southwest, whether or not that ball went in or out, they don't care because they get the side out. And trying to, I, I did not see who was the, the player attempting to make that, make that nice dig there. But, boy, that was a tough shot. And it went high up in the air. I don't know if it hit the top of the ceiling, but, boy, it was just tough for Castle Park to return it over the net after that dig. Jacqueline Chalico serving for Southwest. And the set goes outside. Jacobo with another kill. So Nicole Jacobo coming alive here in game two. The Raiders have the lead. Hey, I, I like that. Senior leadership. And right there, Jacobo was kind of silent in game one. Her and Abara really coming on strong here in game two. And a service ace. Nicely done by Cholico. And the Southwest Raiders are on a roll. They lead 13 to 11 here in game two. And this is the type of game they probably wanted to play in the, in the first game. Couldn't get it done, but now they're in, they're in this match. And now they got the, the crowd kind of behind them now. They'll take a bounce back game in game two here. Nice dig by Devera. Set goes outside again. Ooh. What a smash by Jacobo, but kept alive. Sampson giving up her body there. Castle Park trying to make plays, but Southwest, the rally continues. Chulico will continue to serve. Sampson and, and Gabrielle Mendoza tried to, try to put that ball back over the net. Couldn't get it done, but nice effort there by the Trojans. Back line. Great serve by Chulico. Kept alive, but... Castle Park catches a break there as the overpass hits the ground, and the Trojans will side out. Yeah, I bar it right there, Brian. Trying to do too much on the court. Stay within, stay within your your game right there. You don't, you don't have to be all over the court. You you, you got to rely on your teammates. And that time, she just tried to do too much, and it cost them a point. Big block in the middle by Jackson. Free ball coming for the Trojans. They set the middle again, and a big <laughs> block on the southwest side. That was Gabrielle Devera blocking Nikina Jackson. And the Raiders have extended their lead to three. It's 15 to 12 here in game two. They trail one game to nothing here in this best of five match. Yeah, at that time Jackson thought us a simple little shot over the net would be suffice. But Devera put it right back in her face and she was startled. Big serve again. So now Southwest, the tide has kind of turned and they're putting on the pressure with their serve. And as a result, they lead. Free ball to the Trojans. Set to the middle, nice block in the middle once again, keeping it alive to Vera for Southwest. Swing on the outside, dig Trojans. That was Sampson. And now it's Pato with the dig and a big swing in there and a point <laughs> for Nicole Jacobo. And the Raiders are coming alive. They have their biggest lead of the match, 16-12 here in game two. I don't think Coach Bellino kind of diagram that on in, the, in the locker room, but he'll take that point. Look like Hopobo kind of hit that ball a little bit awkwardly, but it did slide in the, in, into the service for, for a point. Big swing on the right-hand side by Rojas, but it's kept alive. Dig by Uloa. Rojas free ball. Pato. Uloa out to Hakobo, and they call a double on the setter. So Castle Park will get it back. And the bleeding stops momentarily. They've got their best server, Jocelyn Rojas, at the service line. They Man, trail she, by three. They need to get a little run going here, Thomas. Excuse me. She needs to get on a service run here. She hit into the net her first time. Let's see what she does with her second service of this game. Working on getting I don't know. Gabrielle Devera's hair situation sorted oh. out here. <laughs> I was like, what is the delay? <laughs> <laughs> And we're all set, ready to go. Jocelyn Rojas will serve. So important for them to get a run here. And the ball was passed by Cassandra Hernandez. It just sneaked over the net. And again, Southwest gets out of Rojas' serve. So important. She was responsible for double-digit points in game one. Here in game two, they've sided out on both of her first serves. Yeah, it looked like initially Jackson wasn't going to hit the ball. And then in the last session, she tried to hit it, Brian. And then that just that just screwed up the whole play right there because that indecis that indecisiveness kind of hit the ball right back in the net for a service back to uh, Southwest. Senior captain Nicole Hakobo serves that one long, so the team's exchanging service errors. Nikina Jackson at the line for the Trojans. 
free ball coming for Castle Park. It goes outside of the antenna, and Castle Park, just like that, they're trailed by only two, and Coach Bolino's seen enough here in game two. He wants to hang on to this lead and take the game, so he calls a timeout. 17-15 Southwest leading Castle Park on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up, Found the game on your home, on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Brian Vilbin and Thomas Conroy coming to you live from Southwest High School in the South Bay League Metro Conference Volleyball action here in the San Diego section. And PlayOnSports.com is your destination for high school sports and Metro Conference action, both in football and in volleyball throughout this fall season. Yeah, I think I just I think what I just had was a Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> Nikita Jackson will serve for the Trojans. The free ball is coming back to Castle Park. Passed by Rojas. Set back row to Rojas, she'll give a free ball back. It's passed by Pato. And the Trojans will get the point as that ball does not cross over the plane of the net. And the Trojans trail by just one, looking to even this one up with Jackson at the line. Big service right here, and she aced it, nice. Right in front of number 22, Pado uh, right there as, as as uh, Nikina Jackson got a nice ace right there. We're all tied at 17. 17 apiece. Set goes to the middle. Devera nicely done by Gabrielle Devera. And the junior middle blocker is having a great game too. She gets the side out. Southwest keeps the lead. 18-17 Southwest. Yeah, she wanted to do that earlier, but it got tangled up into the net. That time she positioned herself perfectly, Devera, for the point. Devera with a tough serve. The set goes outside. What a swing oh. by Kanisha Sampson and Doug. Again, that's Devera making plays all over the court on offense and defense. Set outside to DeRay Barra. Kept alive by the Trojans. They'll set the middle. Look like we may have had a net no call by the officials. Free ball back for the Trojans. They go outside. Big swing by Sampson. Doug by Chulico. Great volley by both teams. Sampson with a big swing on the outside, and she puts it down. What a big point by Castle Park, tying that one up after a long rally. If they would have lost that and been down by two, it would have been really tough to respond. Now it's tied up, and the Trojans have some momentum. What a big-time shot by Sampson. She powered it through two players right there for the point. Janica Abagat at the service line. She'll be set in the back row, and she swings oh. into the net. That's when she might have gotten a little bit too excited there instead of just getting the ball over the net, forcing Southwest to make a play. Yeah, too much happy feet right there. Didn't set herself up, and, and that caused it for the ball to go into the net. The server, Cassandra Hernandez for Southwest. They lead by a point. Big swing and a net violation called against Southwest, so Kanisha Sampson gets another kill. And the Trojans tie it up. Back and forth we go here in game two. 19 apiece. Castle Park leading the match two, one game to zero. Excuse me, best of five. We play to 25. Set to the right-hand side and put away by Deira Ibarra. We've said that a number of times here in game two. And the Raiders lead. Back and forth we go. Wow, what a turnaround by this Raider team. You can just feel the momentum going their way, and they're trying to close out the deal here, just needing five points away from the win. Ibarra serves that one long, so the back and forth continues. Both teams siding out on their last three opportunities. Yeah, she tried to time it for a perfect ace on the back line. Couldn't get it done, Ibarra. Service back to Castle Park. And at the service line for the Trojans, Meliani Solorio, and she gets an ace. So that seems to be the trend. If you come off the bench for Castle Park, your first serve is going to be an ace. <laughs> yeah, that time caught the back line a little bit out of position there. It went off of uh, Alexis Shavara right there, right off her hands, and it bounced into the net for the point. 
Melanie Ramos checks back into the game, replacing Cassandra Hernandez on the southwest side. Meliani Solorio serving for Castle Park. They lead 21-20. They lead the match one game zero. Set outside, Jacobo, and she puts it down. Nicole Jacobo has responded every time Southwest has needed a big side out here in game two. Yeah, her and Abara have really been the keys in this second game. Anytime that, that the, the Raiders have needed a point, one of those two have done the job. And fitting now, it looks like Jacobo is going to go serve now for the Raiders. And it's impossible to get swings like that if you're not passing the ball well. And that's been the huge difference for Southwest here in game two. Service ace. That was Jacqueline Chalico. And the junior middle blocker with another ace. And Southwest leads it by one. Yeah, that time Kanisha Sampson tried to hit the ball flat-footed. That ball came on top of her awfully fast. And a little miscommunication on the Castle Park side. It results in another ace by Chilico. And Southwest can smell game two. They lead it 23-21, two points away from taking the game. Yeah, boy. The official talking to the crowd here. Getting things sorted out. As Chilico serves again in another ace. Wow, Jacqueline Chilico has put Southwest one point away from taking game two and evening up the match. Solero and, and Samson are having a hard time communicating with one another. Though all the points are going right between their two spots on the court. Chilico serving for the game. Over in two by the setter Lida. Big swing on the outside. Jacobo, that's who you want swinging. If you're Southwest, they'll go back to her again. And she is blocked. Nice block at the net by Lida, but the ball's still in play. And the free ball goes out of bounds. What a play facing game point. Maya Lida with the, with the block, excuse me. Wow, and, and, and Chulico right there just tried to hit the ball and it hit the top of the ceiling. She just couldn't time it right there, Brian. There's too much to ask for her to make a perfect shot like that and keep it in play. We've got a timeout by Coach Bellino for Southwest. We'll keep it right here, Thomas, as this would be just a huge momentum booster for Southwest if they're able to come up with one side out and win this game. Well, I mean, look how they ended the, the first game. They lost 25-11. They only scored one point after it was 16-10. And then to come out here, they look very flat in the early going. I think they were down at maybe three points at one point in early in the match. But since that point, I mean, they've been in every play, and it's really been Ibarra and Halakobo that have really done an excellent job keeping this team. Anytime they needed a shot, they've been in position to put it right back over the net and really keep Castle Park off balance all match long. And they've been passing really well, led by Marianne Pato, the senior libero. As the serve by Lida is passed by the Raiders, they set the middle to Jacobo. And now a swing on the outside, and no touch just long by Jocelyn Rojas, and the Southwest Raiders win game two, 25-22, to 22, and they even this matchup at a game apiece. What a comeback by the Raiders. Wow, big turnaround, a lot of momentum. And the best thing I can say for the Trojans is, thank God you got to switch switch sides on the net, and you get a little time now for the coaching uh, for the coaching staff to kind of regroup them and uh, get them ready for for for, uh, for game three because that one they clearly got outplayed, and uh, and boy, you can just feel it in in in, in your gymnasium right now. A lot of momentum on Southwest side, and now they got the crowd behind them there. One game apiece, and, and, and now they have the advantage of their home court. The Raiders take game two, 25-22. Game three is next on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. This program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information... Go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also have access to thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. 
Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. It's the Southwest Raiders and Castle Park Trojans going at it here at Southwest High School in San Diego, California. Metro Conference Volleyball in the South Bay League. And game one was all Castle Park, 25 to 11. They won that one. So you'd think they'd have the momentum going into game two. But game two was the Raiders of Southwest coming together, finding their passing rhythm, and getting into a great rhythm on the offensive side as well. Nice job by Nicole Hakobo. She was the go-to attacker and really changed the face of this match. Yeah, and, and let's not forget that that Bolas and Rojas, I don't think they had collected any points on their service. So that's tough because they were key components in that 25-11 first game win. Now let's see if they can change their luck here in game three, but they're going to need them to definitely serve a lot better than they did. The... Trojans of Castle Park back out onto the floor getting ready for game three. They might be a little bit stunned after winning game one so easily. Thomas, you talked about sometimes when that happens, you don't pay as much attention going into the second game. You know, you think you've just got it. You win 25 to 11 and you kind of take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit. Is that something that might have happened to Castle Park? Oh, it definitely did. You could you, you sense it. They felt they were in command, especially when they had that early lead in, in game two. They could never get it back once uh, once Southwest made that made that run at them. They could never get the momentum back in their favor, and it was a struggle from about the mid mid midway point on in game two. The junior setter Jessica Uloa will serve things off for the Southwest Raiders, going left to right on your screen in the white jerseys with maroon numbering and black shorts. The Castle Park Trojans in the all black uniforms with white numbering and red trim. The set goes to the middle, Nikina Jackson, and she gets the kill. Castle Park starts game three off with a side out. And for Castle Park, that has to be a big sigh of relief that they got their first point in game three. They didn't want to be officially trailing to start this game. Maya Lida, the server. Set goes outside, big swing on the outside by Cassandra Hernandez, but it's kept alive by Castle Park. Someone's gonna have to step up and set the ball for the setter. Jocelyn Rojas puts a free ball back to the Raiders' side. And they take a swing on the outside. Who else but Jacobo? Dug by the Trojans. The officials call a tip, and Jocelyn Rojas will have another kill, and the Trojans will have the ball. Boy, good eyes there by the official. I didn't see it, but, boy, everybody called it, so I have to believe it. But, boy, great timing there by Rojas to put that shot in. And to get it, she was trying to go across court. That was going to be a tough shot, and she got the point. Maya Lida serving for Castle Park. And the officials say that one went wide. The Ooh. Castle Park faithful disagree with the call. <laughs> but it's not their call to make, and the officials say it's Southwest ball. They get a much-needed side out early here in game three. Wow. Okay. Thomas does not like that one. <laughs> <laughs> The Trojans have a little bit of trouble with it, but they get a big swing Ooh. on the right-hand side, and Jocelyn Rojas just let us know how she felt about the call by hammering it down the line. He's got his red card out. And the official gives a yellow card to one of the, I think the head Southwest. coach. Southwest, did he give that to Bellino. Coach Bellino? He did, and then he tells him that he's got to sit down. Now he'll pull out the red card. And Coach Bolino cannot believe that he just received a red card early in game three. And Nicole Jacobo, the senior captain, floor captain for Southwest, is going over to talk to the official and find out exactly what the issue is and why her coach just received a red card. Well, he jumped off the bench immediately before that, right when that ball hit the ground. And it, seemed like a, a quick a quick reaction to the call. And I think for, for Coach Bellino, I think he thinks that that was just a, a makeup call for that last play there on, uh, on Castle Park. I think that's his argument. And now we've got some discussion at the scorer's table. I wouldn't be surprised if the Castle Park Trojans are awarded a point here. Haven't seen it yet reflected on the scoreboard, but 
I'm led to believe that a red Here card equals a point, and there it is. It's now four to one Castle Park as they get the side out and an extra point off of that red card. And the officials just making sure that that point goes up there. Now Coach Bellino's not going to be able to stand up the rest of the <laughs> match. So we'll see how he handles having to sit the rest of the time. I know as a, a volleyball coach, it's very difficult to just sit there and watch <laughs> your team perform and not be able to stand up. And it's, it's such an involved position. So it's going to be a struggle. I thought the red the I thought the, the the red card was a little bit too fast for me, Brian. He gave him the, the yellow card and then he immediately brought out the red. Uh, you know, I think I think you have to have some give some leeway to a coach. If you want to if you want to give him the yellow card, that's fine. But boy, that red card went went up awfully fast. And if if it did nothing else, it really got the crowd fired up as you could hear everybody going nuts on both sides, the Raider fans and the Trojan fans leading full gym cheers. Gotta love to see that if you're on the floor. As the Trojans hit that one into the net, that was Abagat unable to connect, and the Raiders get a side out. Yeah, nice play there by Southwest, and now it's going to be interesting to see how much momentum that will go their way to try to play for their coach. The serve by Devera, free ball back to the Raiders. Back set, Hernandez blocked nicely by Sampson at the net. Free ball coming for the Trojans. Pass by Rojas, set to the middle. And Jackson puts it down for Castle Park, and the Trojans respond. They lead 5-2 to two here in game three. Yeah, it's something they, they missed in game two was Nikita, Nikita Jackson playing very solid in the middle right, in, right across the net. And that time she made her second big-time shot here. Sarah Montione into the game for the Trojans as Nikita Jackson... Serves that one into the net. She'll come out as the libero Stephanie Legault checks back into the game for Castle Park. The server will be Melanie Ramos for the Southwest Raiders. They trail by two. The match is even a game apiece. Sampson's going to get the swing from the back row, although she's a front row player. And they're going to go back to Sampson again, this time from the front, and she smashes it. The call is a touch, but Kanisha Sampson, there was no <laughs> doubt about that one. Yeah, and there was no doubt watching her on the court that she was not going to get that point for Castle Park. She seems, she, she, she's sensing right now that they need, they need to put away the Southwest team because they seem to be getting a little momentum now by their coach. Janica Abigail with a service ace, a much-needed ace for the Trojans. They've extended their lead to four. That's their biggest lead since game one. Yeah, we haven't seen that, that, that good hard service there from Castle Park, but now it's coming back here in game three. Nice pass by Pato, and he's set to the right-hand side to Ibarra. She's been lights out from the right. This one goes to the middle, Montione. Kept alive by the Raiders. They get a swing back across to Castle Park, who's going to go to Sampson, and Sampson is dug. Nice job, 50-50 ball at the net. That was Garisa Abdin with the dig for Southwest. Castle Park will go back to the right-hand side. Big back row swing. Janica Abigat. she put that one down. She's had a little bit of trouble getting the ball over the net from the back row. Not that time. Oh, not at all. Great reaction there by Abigat to get that point. And here she comes with the serve. Another strong serve by Abigat, who's on a little run here for Castle Park. If that was in, that was Ibarra again putting the ball away, which she does. Daira Ibarra has been so tough from the right-hand side. Yeah, and Ibarra needed to get that point for her squad. They seem to be losing that momentum that they gained by, that, uh, by, by the red card from their coach. Ibarra serving, nice pass by Legault. Free ball coming for the Raiders. They go to the middle, and a nice swing by Chilico. And now the outside, Kanisha Sampson. Good night. Taking over right now, Kanisha Sampson. She was kind of silent in that, in that second game, but she's really come out to play here in the third, and she's getting ready to serve right here up five. 
Samson gets that one just over the net for an ace. What a tough serve after a couple of big kills on the offensive side. Then she uses her serve as another form of offense. Yeah, found the part right there where Southwest did not, did not set up very well there on the, on the side area. And she had a player running kind of off stride and it went in for the point. Samson still serving as game three is starting to look a lot like game one, and that's bad news if you're the Southwest Raiders. 11 to four, the Castle Park lead here in the third game. Yeah, off balance shots and, and shooting too long. That's been the problem here for Southwest here in the third game. Set outside, big swing by Jacobo, but it's kept alive by the Trojans. What a swing, a down ball by Samson, and she almost got a kill out of it. Out of bounds to Castle Park, and the Trojans lead by eight. Chulico right there with the, with the tough shot that went out. And Coach Bellino calls a timeout. Coach Bellino was wondering if he's allowed to stand up during the timeout. <laughs> he's not allowed to stand up during the course of play, but he is able to call a timeout. His Raiders trail the Trojans of Castle Park 12-4 on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports lives here. Brian Vilvin and Thomas Conroy bringing you all the action from Southwest High School, the home of the Raiders. Metro Conference Volleyball in South Bay League play. And we're knotted up at a game apiece in a battle here. The Castle Park Trojans looking very strong in game three. They took game one 25 to 11, and then they dropped the second game, but they're up by eight early here in game three. Yeah, right now the officials talking before we get back to action here. The officials getting everything sorted, making sure that Everything is by the book here in this mid-season competition. And now they're going to keep Coach Bellino abreast of what's going on. Coach Parch from Castle Park wondering as well what's going on. <laughs> but the officials are getting everything sorted out. Kanisha Sampson serves to get us back into it. Another great serve by Sampson. And a little miscommunication there. Montione looked like she was going to hit that, so the setter, Lida, tried to get out of her way, but then the ball just hit the floor. Yeah, it just heard footsteps from Lida, and she stepped away. As you said, she was ready to hit that ball, then at the last second just gave away to, to Lida. And a service ace just like that. Once again, Jacqueline Chelico. And she has been doing it from the service line. Yeah, I read on the far, far line. That was going to be a tough, tough, tough dig there for Sampson. She could not come up with it. And the point goes to Southwest. Chelico again, passed by Sampson. And a kill in the middle. That's Montione coming in and making a difference for Castle Park. Yeah, nice play. Redeemed herself. Good work. And Montione will be replaced by Sarah Bolas. And we know what Sarah Bolas can do with her serve. Yeah, quiet in game two. Let's see what she does here in the third. Tough serve set to the middle. And that is Jacobo kept alive. Net violation against Southwest. And the Southwest fans cannot believe the call. Castle Park gets credit for the point. Yeah, and now that lead is starting to get stretched out by Castle Park. This is a danger point in the match for the, for the Raiders. Especially with Bolas at the line. And a tip, what a time for that. Nicole Jacobo, she's been coming in and just blasting the ball all game long. The Trojans were expecting another one, and she tips it right over the top. So difficult to defend. Yeah, right over Lida and right in front of number seven, Rojas. Great, great position there. It'll be the setter, Jessica Uloa, serving for the Raiders. She'll set it up to Devera in the middle, dug by Rojas. Light up back to Rojas. Rojas dug. Devera steps in and makes a nice set to the outside. And Nicole Jacobo does what she does and puts it away on the outside. Kill Southwest. They've cut into that Castle Park lead. They trail by six. Yep, the whole back line kind of shifted over to the far side of the court. That left an opening 
for Hokobo, and she put it in right in front of Samson for the point. The setter, Lida, calls her own number and gets a kill. The pass close to the net by Rojas, and Lida does the rest. Nice side out by the Trojans. Their lead back up to seven. And here comes Lida right at the, uh, going back to the service line now and getting ready to serve this one. And they're up seven. And that one goes into the net. A mistake when you're trying to get something going as Southwest gets an easy side out. Yeah, Dirty solved her, her service problems in, in, in the second game. It's come back now and haunts them here in game three. The server will be Hakobo for the Raiders, and she gives it right back to Castle Park. That's been something we saw in game one, and we've seen it a number of times here in game three. After a Castle Park miss serve, the Raiders give it right back to them. Yeah, they can't trade points right now with Castle Park. They have to go on a little bit of a run here to get back into this third game. Rojas gets that one in. Nicely done by Ibarra on the outside, but the Trojans keep it alive. Little miscommunication by Castle Park. They'll do what they can to keep that ball in play. Rojas to the deep corner. The set goes outside Ibarra. Ibarra will give a free ball back. Lida sets the right side, and a big swing on the right by Janica Abagat, and she has come alive in the attack for Castle Park. Boy, nice play by Abagat and great positioning. And, and teamwork by the whole Castle Park team to set her up. Good point. 17 to nine, the Castle Park lead over Southwest. <laughs> Trying to get the ball out from underneath the bleachers and we do <laughs> to a round of applause from the Castle Park cheering section. Well, that happens sometimes, get the ball underneath there. And Jocelyn Rojas tried to power that one. I think she tried to hit it through the net. <laughs> It didn't work as the net did its job and caught the ball. And it goes back to Southwest. Let's see if they can't make one after a Castle Park miss serve. Yeah, and trading points for Castle Park side could hurt them because they just can't, they can't afford to, to give any momentum back to Southwest as the ball goes into the net. And I apologize for jinxing Gabrielle Devera <laughs> as that one goes into the net. But the officials call for a replay. She served that one before the whistle had blown, so... A lucky break for wow. Southwest as she gets this one in. And a huge swing on the outside by Sampson who keeps it alive. Free ball for the Raiders and it goes into the net. So Southwest coming back here, trying to get back into game three. They trail by six. Yeah, Abba got Dorsey had it over the net way short. Not good reaction by her to get that ball over on the free shot. Pass by Sampson. They're going to set the middle to Abagat. And calling her own number, the setter, Jessica Uloa, with a kill for Southwest. And just like that, the Raiders trail by only five. Timeout taken by Aaron Parch and Castle Park. And Thomas, if you're Coach, Coach Parch and you've been completely in control all game long, what are you telling your kids right now? Hey, you got to get your head back in it. Again, they, they get in that little complacent zone where they think they, they can just kind of waltz in after taking a sizable lead. They were up 17-9, and it seemed like they had firm control of this match. Now it's 17-12, and uh, you've seen a lot of lots of days ago plays, a lot of half-hearted shots. Nobody's really going, uh, going through, just going through the motions. They need to have full effort here, and that's a danger point. And he called the timeout, similar to Coach Bellino, when he saw something that was not going right on his team. This time he called the timeout and tried to shake them out of this funk again because they go down 2-1. That's tough on the road. They have to win this. They, they have to win this game if, if they're going to win this match at all. And how important are these timeouts for Coach Bellino, who can't talk during the course of play? He can't stand up. He's really got to take full advantage as Gabrielle Devera serves for Southwest and puts a lot of pressure on. The Trojans have some trouble with it. And now a swing on the outside, put away by Deira Ibarra. And Southwest is alive. They're right back in it. They trail by just four. Yeah, Sarah Bolas right again. Could not react in time to get that shot, get that dig, and it's hurting them right now. Another point for Southwest. Oh, and it went off of Bolas. <laughs> for a service ace, the Raiders. They trail by three, but they're in complete control right now. She seemed totally shocked that Rojas didn't go after that ball and went right off her arm. Complete control of the momentum as Devera serves again. 
Set right side, Jackson. Doug. That was Uloa. Nice pass by Sampson. And the set will go to the back row to Rojas, who hammers it, but it's kept alive by the Raiders. Nice rally both sides. With the setter out, there's a little bit of confusion there and miscommunication. So tough when the setter passes the first ball to see who's going to make the second play. And we had a couple of Trojans fighting over who's going to take it. They both conceded to the other, and Southwest trails by only two. Yeah, and Jackson tried to react to it, just could not get on the, a decent shot on the ball. Set to the right side, big swing, and it's in there. Ooh. The Castle Park coaching staff can't believe that call, but the line judges call it in, so it's in, and Southwest trails by only one. What a comeback. They've trailed by double digits here in this game. Yeah, and they've come on fire here. Seven straight points for the Raiders. Set outside to Sampson, trying to stop the bleeding. It's going to be another free ball. i got to imagine Sampson's getting this ball again. Instead, they go to the middle, and Jackson does her part, kept alive by the Raiders. A very scrappy team, Ooh. this Southwest Raider defense. They're keeping everything up off the floor, as are the Trojans. What a rally here in game three. Swing, huge. Rojas kept alive, but it hits the ceiling. And that was a back row dig by Jocelyn Rojas, right when her team needed a big play and they have a two-point lead once again. Yeah, and she put a lot on that shot there. It came right on top of the Raider player. Didn't catch the number, but she had no time to react, and the ball went straight up and hit the ceiling. Nikina Jackson serving for the Trojans. Sarah Montione back into the front row for Castle Park. Nice dig by Rojas in the back row. Sampson, down ball, long. Point southwest. Again, a... A lazy shot, in my opinion. you, you got to have good footwork, and she just seemed to hit that ball flat-footed, and you're not going to get anything on the ball. And that and that sailed way, way, way wide out. And, well, you needed a better shot from her right there at that point. If you're going to hit a down ball, you got to keep it in play. Mm -hmm. Melanie Ramos will serve, and she serves wide. So the Trojans catch a break. Their lead back up to two, 19-17 here in game three, the all-important third game as the match is tied a game apiece. Metro Conference Volleyball, South Bay League coverage here on PlayOnSports.com. Nice serve by Abagat. And she'll get the point as hitting it into the net is Nicole Jacobo. And Jacobo has been so solid. Excuse me, that was Chilico. And we're going to have the final timeout taken by Coach Bellino here in Game 3. His team trailing by three, and he could sense that the game was starting to slip away from their fingertips. It's so tough if you're Southwest crawling all the way back into the game. You trailed by double digits in this game, and then you get it all the way back to one, and now it's a three-point game again late in game three. Yeah, but a great timeout. Stop that bleeding. Get them refocused so that they can still get this match going. And that's how, that's how you reinforce it. You say, you were down by double digits, and you got within one. Now you're only down three. You just need now a, a couple of good couple of good valleys here and then and, and, and wait for that kill and get service back and that's what he has to instill in his team. For the Trojans, got to keep your foot on the gas pedal. It seems like they've led up a couple of different times throughout the match. What's it going to take for them to get back into the groove of it here? Yeah, stay focused. That would be my call on them. Stay focused. Know what you need to do here on the road. Abigat still serving. The set goes to the right hand side to Ibarra. She's been dynamite from there. Sampson will hit a down ball this time Takes a little leap off of one foot and just gets it over the net for a kill and a point for the Trojans. Much needed. They lead now by four. They're four points away from taking a 2-1 lead. And that's exactly what I want to see from Kanisha. Good setup for herself, and she powered it right on top of the Southwest player for the point. Big serve by Abagat and nearly an ace, but it stayed inbounds. Sampson gives a free ball to the Raiders. They're going to set outside, and a big swing by Ibarra for a kill off of the block of Montillon, and the Raiders respond. Yeah, tough break for Mon Montillon. She thought, she thought she was going to make a nice save there. Couldn't get it done, and more importantly now for Southwest, they have the service here on their home court, trailing by three. Nice pass by the libero Legault. The set's going to go to Sampson. 
50-50 ball at the net, kept alive by the Trojans. Sampson's going to have another run at it. This time she takes another power swing. 50-50 ball again, blocked by Montillon. Kept alive by the Raiders. Swing outside, Jacobo. Free ball coming to Southwest. The set goes outside, Jacobo, and it's kept alive by the Trojans. Again, this is the best rally of the match so far. Big swing from oh. the back row by Rojas, kept alive by the Raiders. Set to Sampson. And she gets the kill, and Castle Park wins the point of the match so far. And it's huge for the Trojans. They lead 22-18, three points away from taking the third game. Pardo made at least four great, great saves there to keep the ball in play. That time she just could not come up with it. Kanisha Sampson with the tough serve. Set goes outside to Hakobo. And the setter... Lida calls her own number, oh, nice. kept alive by the Raiders. Southwest puts it away. Boy, nice shot there. Got Sampson off balance. She tried to hit it up for, for one of her teammates. Just couldn't get it high enough, and it fell to the ground. Nice play. The server will be Jacqueline Chilico. 50-50 ball at the net. Free ball coming for the Raiders. Nice job just keeping that one alive by Castle Park. And they're going to have another opportunity at it. The setter out, and she'll get the third contact. And just like that, from a flat-footed spot, Maya Lida put the ball deep into the back corner, and that's the toughest spot to play it as a defender. Nice, smart play by the setter for Castle Park. Yeah, Jacqueline Tolico right there did not make a good shot. Off balance, went backwards, out of play. And the serve goes into the net by Bolas with a chance to get to game point. Instead, you give a free point to Southwest. Now the Raiders need to respond here by keeping this one in play, forcing the Trojans to make a play to win this point. Boy, and Castle Park needed Bolas to come through with his serve. So he hit it right in the middle of the net. Uloa serves it long, and the Raiders have had a tendency to do that, giving the ball right back to Castle Park after a missed serve. And the Trojans have game point here in game three. Maya Lida, the setter, serving. Pass by Pato. Swing on the right-hand side. Kept oh. alive by the Trojans. Lido with a great shot. And a swing on the outside just wide. The point goes to Castle Park, and game three goes to Castle Park. They take a 2-1 advantage over Southwest as we head into game four. Castle Park 2, Southwest 1 on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Well, tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. 25-20, the Castle Park Trojans beating Southwest in game three. And now Castle Park's one game away from taking the match on the road here in a league battle against Southwest. So important for the Trojans to come out early and try to establish themselves here in game four. Yeah, you, you got to say now you, this is your opportunity. You know, play consistent for this whole final four, or for, I shouldn't say final, for this fourth ga game. And then you can get out of here with a victory. But right now all the, all, all the pressure is on the Raiders. And uh, if, you're in that, if you're in that huddle, the coaching staff there has to go and just enforce in this team. You were down double digits. You came back in that match. You made a couple of key mistakes at the end to hurt you. But you're still in this match. All you have to do now is win this fourth game. And then, and then you go on to the fifth and final deciding set. And it's going to be nice to have that crowd behind you for that fifth game. Well, the game has played out. Castle Park just dominant in game one. Winning that one 25-11. to 11. Game two, Southwest came back and really asserted themselves into the match. They dominated net play in game two, taking that one 25-20. And then game three looked like it was going to play out just like game one with Castle Park taking a huge lead. But Southwest crawled back into it. Did they do enough momentum-wise to get things going here for game four? Yeah, I really do. I really think they do. I think one of the keys for Coach Bellina is going to have to tell his team is, is uh, get more involved early in the match. It seems like they fall behind and then Kind of the, the, the wake-up call comes for them a little bit late, and then they have to scurry back. Uh, I think what he has to enforce in them is, is get involved in, in the game early on 
and get that lead early on and put the pressure on Castle Park to try to close it out because that's awfully tough to do uh, on the road is, 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 a, is to win a, a match of this nature, especially in a tough environment like here at Southwest High School. Well, Southwest has a ton of experience having already played 12 matches on the young season. So they're the more experienced team out on the court right now. But the Castle Park Trojans, the team with a chance to put it away here in game four. They will serve to begin the fourth game. The Trojans wearing black uniforms, white numbering with red trim. The Southwest Raiders with the white jerseys, black shorts, and maroon numbering. It will be the setter, Maya Lida, serving for Castle Park as we get underway here in game four. The officials making sure everybody's in the right spot. Coach Mark Bellino, after that red card there in game two, excuse me, game three, is now, was that game two? Two. I believe that, yeah, yeah. game two. That was <coughs> game two where he got that red card, and now he is... Stuck on that chair. <laughs> he can call timeouts to talk to his team, but he's not allowed to talk, and he's not allowed to get up off of his seat. So He has to be quieter than a monk. <laughs> <laughs> a difficult position to find yourself in if you are a volleyball coach as the Trojans will get things going with their serve. And that one is in on the back line. Maya Lida with the ace to get it going. The Southwest bench did not like that call. Yeah, that was a tough call. It, it could have went either way. You got to give the benefit of the doubt to the back judge on that. The server, Lida, will look to extend the game one lead. one nothing. the Trojans. And she serves that one into the net. So let's see if Southwest can respond and run off some points here on the offensive end instead of giving a freebie back to the Trojans. Uloa, the setter, a junior, will serve. Big swing and it's long by Jocelyn Rojas. She brought the fury but hit that one just long. Yeah, nice serve there getting out of the gate. You can see the kind of the intensity by Southwest coming out here. Raiders kind of sensing that they need to set the tone here in the fourth game and get that home, home court advantage on their side. Uloa will serve, Rojas passes. The set's going to go to Rojas on the right-hand side, and she puts it away. Jocelyn Rojas stepping up for the Trojans. She's not afraid to take a hard swing. Yeah, Hakobo tried to come over there to block it, and Brian, she just could not get there in time. Great play there by Castle Park. More importantly, getting the service back. And the serve goes into the antenna, so a gift by Rojas back to Southwest. Boy, and, and, and to me, I'm sorry, but... I'm just mystified by Rojas and Bolas because their service has just gone downhill after that. After that, really some really impressive serves in the in the first game. They have not, I, to me, have not had a consistent run at all si since since that first game. It, just that mystifies me, and, and boy, it, that's a big part of their game. I think they're missing right here. Jacobo with the serve. And the free ball comes back to Southwest. They'll set the middle and a big swing by Devera. And the Raiders will get the point. They lead it four to two here in game four. Yeah, Nicely done by the middle. Boy, Gabrielle has, has, has played a nice game here, especially in the middle on Jackson. She's not, that's the third time she's put it over her for a point. Jacobo will serve, set goes outside, Sampson. And Sampson will get credit for the kill. Smart job again, didn't have a swing at it, so she put it into the deep corner where there's no defenders and the Raiders had trouble with it. Yeah, tough play there by Southwest. Again, off balance. Can't get a decent shot off, and that time it just tailed off into their, into their bench area for the point for Castle Park. Nikina Jackson will serve, and the Raiders have some trouble with it. Service ace Nikina Jackson, and Castle Park has tied it up. And yeah, right now kind of trading points right now. I think the team that can kind of get on a little run here service-wise He's going to win this fourth game. Free ball coming to the Trojans. 50-50 ball at the net. Devera doing a nice job with that one. Sampson's going to give a free ball back to Southwest. Pado hits that one to the back line, but in on the back line. The Castle Park fans don't like that call, but the Southwest fans do. <laughs> it's a nice split gymnasium. Great atmosphere here 
on a Thursday evening for volleyball in the Metro Conference. Yeah, these back judges are having a tough time of it right now. Everybody's kind of looking at their call, waiting. Now we're getting the, the two uh, referees now to talk to one another. And uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're confirming here, Brian, to see like maybe, maybe we should be a little bit more aggressive with, with calls if, if we can on, on that area right there because that seemed like we all waited for that back judge to make the final call. And the officials have the right to overrule a call if they see it otherwise. Service ace. And that was Gabrielle Devera again. Devera's having a really nice match for the Raiders. Yeah, all around effort. Nice job by her. Seems like anytime the team needs something, she's right there to, to give it to them. Whether in service, uh, set up, or, or, or kill. Set to the back row, and a nice swing in the back row. Wow, nice hit by Jocelyn Rojas. Yeah, they needed that Castle Park. They kind of looked like they were teetering on possibly getting out of this game, but now they, they get service back, and uh, for their sake, they want to get on a little bit of a run. Nobody asked Jocelyn Rojas to go half speed. <laughs> the Can free ball back over to the other side works out for Southwest as they put it right into the center of the court. Nobody knew what to do with it, and it drops for a Raider point. Yeah, Matione and Sampson once again miscommunicating with one another. Let the ball drop right in front of them. The serve by Ramos, a good one. Set goes to the middle to Matione. And now outside Ibarra. Great dig in the back row by Rojas, doing a little bit of everything here in game four. Oh. And the ball is put away by Kanisha Sampson in Castle Park response. Yeah, but you, you, you get this sense neither one of these teams right now have, have full control of this fourth game. And both teams just trying, desperately trying to gain that control. Sampson, the server. And that's Ibarra with the ball over the net. Now Montione tries her hand. Ibarra will have another swing this time from the outside, and a lift is going to be called by Montione. Easy call for the official there as she reached backwards and pretty much threw the ball across the net. <laughs> Looks like one of my shots on the beach on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't teach her that, folks. Didn't teach her that. Thomas giving lessons out there on how to lift the ball. <laughs> yeah. Except you don't get caught, Thomas. Like, you're all right. Deira Ibarra will serve for the Raiders. Set outside, and a kill by Rojas. Even when Rojas hits a down ball from a flat-footed position, she hammers it. <laughs> yeah, she really does. It. She's not afraid at all. There's no fear in Jocelyn Rojas. It just seems like the, the way she hits that kind of down ball, it kind of is like a change of pace because it, it really throws the back line off, and, then, and they, do, they do not react well to that shot as it comes on top of them way faster than they're anticipating it. One of the smallest players on the floor, and she's got the biggest arm for sure. Nice serve and an ace into the game. Meliani Solorio, and she gets an ace. That's the second time she's come off the bench and responded immediately with an ace. Yeah, hit it right into Ramos, and she had no reaction time on it. And she rips another serve, this time passed by Pato. Set to the middle. Kept alive by the Trojans. They'll go back row and again from the right side in the back row, big swing by Abagat. But what a play by the setter, Jessica Uloa. Keeping that ball alive, put it into the deep corner, getting a point for the Raiders and a side out. Yeah, keeping Castle Park off balance. Trojan Kanisha Sampson just could not react to the ball and it went off her hands, out of bounds. Point and serve over to Southwest. And a big serve by Jacqueline. Chilico. The ball's going to go outside to Hakobo. And Hakobo loses it after the lift by Southwest. Castle Park will retain the ball. A fourth tie we already had in this match. We're tied at nine. And this one going back and forth, much like game two did. Do you think that favors either team? Right now, I think it favors Southwest because Castle Park it seems them they want to, uh, as a referee, uh, there's going to be the official talking to the crowd once again. And I think it, it really does help uh, uh, Southwest. They need the momentum right now. And Castle Park kind of sensing it and forcing too much right now as a lot of pressure is on them to keep up 
with the home team. And the official trying to get the crowd calm down a little bit. It's a very excited atmosphere here and a heated battle. And it seems like the crowds are both enjoying themselves. So we'd love to see that here on a Thursday evening. Oh yeah, the great atmosphere here is a both teams, it seems like it's a 50-50 crowd right now. Castle Park traveling well here to Southwest. 10-9, the Raiders leading the Trojans. Nice dig by Pato. Oh. Got to keep that one alive, and they do. Now they the set goes to the middle. Jackson, and that's kept alive again. Nice defense by the Raiders. They go outside, and a huge kill by Nicole Jacobo. And Southwest has a two-point lead. Great well, rally. Great setup by, by, by the team for Okobo. And, boy, she put it right on top of Sampson. She had no reaction time, went off of her shoulder, and out of play. The serve mishandled by the Trojans, but somehow they keep that ball in play. Set right side. Big swing. Doug. Hernandez and the swing by Sampson goes long. Southwest taking over a bit of control here in game four. They're looking to send this one to a decisive fifth game. Boy, first time either team has had a three point lead and it belongs to the Raiders at 12-9. Well at 9-9 you said that score favored Southwest and they've responded with three unanswered points making Thomas Conrad look good <laughs> and Jocelyn Rojas doesn't want any part of that when the Trojans have needed a side out. They've gone to Rojas, and she's responded. Yeah, and De Devere tried to, tried to kill it back at her right at the net and could not get it as it went off her, her arms and out of, out of play for the point for Castle Park. Let's see if Rojas can get something going at the service line. You talked about it. Double-digit serving in game one for Rojas, and since then it's been a little bit quiet from the line. Her offense has oh. picked way up, but at the service line she... Has not had any rolls. This is a point for the Trojans, which will keep Rojas at the line. Let's see if she brings out that patented rifle of a right arm that <laughs> she's been using all afternoon long. And she does. Ooh. And it results in a free ball. They're going to set outside to Sampson and a dig by Pato. Jacobo dug by the Trojans. Back row swing by Rojas, still in play. 50-50 ball blocked at the net by Nikina Jackson. Well done, not going over. And the Trojans have something going here. It's all tied up at 12. Yeah, great timing right there by Jackson, recognizing where she was, and she put it right back on Southwest for another point. Rojas with an ace, and just like that, we talked about Jocelyn Rojas had been slightly quiet from the service line since game one. And she's exploding here in game four. Yeah, that time right on top of Pot, though. She couldn't do anything with it. Went out of bounds. Four straight for Rojas. The set goes to the right side. Nice dig. The dig by Rojas. And she'll swing from the back row. Kept alive. Great dig by Ibarra. And a nice play at the net by Nikita Jackson. She's doing her part for the Trojans. And so is Jocelyn Rojas. They now have a two-point lead. Coach Bellino wants a timeout. His Raiders trail the Trojans 14-12 in game four on PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Metro Conference Volleyball. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter, and you can also have access to thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at YouTube.com slash PlayOnNetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination. For high school sports, playonsports.com. Brian Vilvin and Thomas Conroy coming to you live from Southwest High School, home of the Raiders. Chris Cashman, our producer, making coffee, our videographer, bringing you all of this Metro Conference action. We'll be covering Metro Conference volleyball each Thursday on playonsports.com. So don't forget to join us next week as we'll have another great Metro Conference matchup. We've also got Friday night football around the country, so check our broadcast schedule page for game times from around the nation. Might even be some games on Saturday, so all weekend long, be with playonsports.com. As Rojas continues to serve for the Trojans, they lead by two, looking to win this match. 
They lead the match two games to one. Set goes outside Sampson. Kept alive Ibarra. And Ibarra will swing from the back row. Doug Rojas. And a double is called against Castle Park. So Southwest gets the side out that they needed. Nice timeout by Coach Bellino. Yeah, got to concentrate a little bit better than that for Castle Park. They had a little bit of control of this match. They lose it. More importantly, service back over to Southwest. And they lost Rojas' serve. She's been so tough. Big swing on the outside by Sampson. What a dig by Pato. And Sampson hammers it again. Don't give Kanisha Sampson two, two attempts at that one. Yeah, that was too easy. Uh, Pato, I don't think, wanted to send it her way, but unfortunately it went that way, and she was waiting for it, and that time did a nice shot. Nikina Jackson at the line. 15-13, the Trojan lead. Game four. Overpass. The Trojans have some trouble with it in Southwest. They get lucky that time. I think Lida right there with the uh, with the miss hit there. Service back to Southwest. Boy, back and forth action right here. Devera serving. She's been a big difference maker for the Raiders in their comeback. Oh. And Sampson just gets it over the net. Kanisha Sampson coming alive offensively for the Trojans here in game four. Yeah, great timing right there. Just kind of got it right over the lip of the net for the point. Sarah Montione back into the front row for the Trojans. Abagat at the service line. Sampson passes it. Set goes to the middle to Montione. Kept alive by the Raiders. Ibarra, free ball. Big swing by Sampson, kept alive. What a dig by Garisa Abdin. And the Raiders get the point. Wow. Abdin just pretty much sacrificed her body there to get that point. And Southwest is thankful they trailed by just one. I don't know how she kept that ball <laughs> in, but boy, Rojas was right on the line. And she can't believe that it, she let it go and out of bounds for a point. Cassandra Hernandez off the tape for an ace, and we're all tied up at 16. Right now, these are just perfectly well-placed balls by, by the Raiders, and they're coming up with the points. So, man, give credit to them. They're, they're exactly putting the ball where they want. And that swing, that serve, excuse me, is going to go outside the antenna for a point Castle Park. The Trojans eight points away from taking this match on the road in a hotly contested battle so far. It's Castle Park two games, Southwest one. Ibarra from the right-hand side where she's been so good and she hits that one wide. Just kind of mishit that one. Yeah, tough break for her right there. She knew she made a mistake there. And more importantly, she gave them now a two-point lead, especially this late in the match. Any multiple-point multiple lead you can get is going to be to that, that team's advantage. Great pass by Abdin and put away in the middle by Chilico. And it'll be a bar at the service line for Southwest. They needed that point right there, Thomas. Yeah, they needed it. More importantly, right now, they need to get a couple of points here on the on service volley here. Let's see if they can do it. Deira Ibarra at the line. Nice serve. And over in two is Maya Lida. But the Raiders keep it alive and putting it away. Nicole Hakobo. Hakobo, excuse me, puts it away on the out, outside for Southwest, and we're all tied up at 18. Ibarra yeah. still at the line. I like to see that. Ibarra and Hokobo coming up with the points, and we're going to get a timeout by Castle Park. 18 18, the score here in game four. Castle Park took game one, 25 11. It was the Raiders of Southwest taking game two, 25 22. Game three belonged to Castle Park, 25 20, and right now we're locked up at 18. And you talk about when the game is tied and close like this, it favors the home team in Southwest. Yeah, and you, you get the sense that the crowd here gets, it gets lively when they're on the court, kind of dies down and you know, when both teams are right now talking. And really luckily for, for Castle Park is they're not playing to a total bias, you know, home crowd here. They have brought some fans here. I would, and you know, I, I think I initially said 50-50 then looking around between the breaks, it's, it's probably 60-40 in that in that range area for for Southwest, but still that 40% is, is giving them a some good uh, added confidence here as they come back on the court. 
Deira Ibarra, the junior outside hitter, will serve for Southwest. Nice pass by Legault, the libero. And Rojas just going to keep that one in play. Chilico in the middle, free ball to Castle Park. Big swing in the back row, that's Abagat, kept alive by the Raiders. They go outside, and again it's Jacobo. And a break for the Trojans as that ball should have been passed by Southwest. Yeah, Chilico right there moved back like he was going to hit the ball, and then the last second shied away from it. Fell right behind her, tough break. At that point, right now, I think I'd be telling my team, go after every ball, you collide, so be it, but let's get the ball, let's get that ball over the net and see what happens. And the tough Meliani Solorio in to serve for the Trojans, but she serves that one long. That's a break for Southwest. Now, I think that's the first time she's actually done that today. So key opportunity, and once again, we're tied up. Normally when she comes in, you can book at least an ace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big serve kept alive by Sampson. 50-50 ball at the net, and it's won by Maya Lida. The setter goes up and gets the point for the Trojans. They lead 20-19 late here in game four. Boy, that was a big point right there by Lida. Lida with another good serve, and having some trouble with it, Nikina Jackson. Jackson... Didn't know how far that was going to go over the net. She didn't know if she had defenders there, so she tried to make a play. Instead, the point goes to Southwest, and again, we're knotted up at 20. Boy, every time you think Castle Park is going to get that momentum in their direction and, and go on a good run, Southwest somehow comes up with the service. The set goes right side, and Rojas swings wide. Point for the Raiders. And Southwest has a late lead. And it seemed right there like Rojas did not set up the way her team wanted her. They kind of surprised by that shot of hers. And now a one point lead for the Raiders. The set goes to the right hand side and Rojas smashes it. What a dig by Uloa. And the free ball will come back to Castle Park. Again Rojas, this time dug by Ibarra. The Raiders trying to keep that one alive. They do. Got to imagine it's going. This time it goes back row to Sampson, and it's dug by Ibarra. Three great digs on this rally by the Raiders. And Ibarra with a one-handed swing, kept alive by the Trojans, but a point southwest. Deira Ibarra with two huge digs and a kill. And the Raiders are on top by two. They're controlling the late goings here in game four. Yeah, and, and Milena saw... Solorio right there made a great save for Castle Park. Sampson just couldn't put it over the net. Free ball coming to Southwest. Pass by Marianne Pato. Set outside, big block. And again, a 50-50 ball at the net, put away by Nakina Jackson. She comes up with a big play when Castle Park needed it most. They trail by one. Yeah, she redeemed herself for her early mistake right there, and it couldn't come at a better time as it cuts the lead in half at 22-21 Southwest. And Coach Bellino calls his final timeout of game two. He saw Jocelyn Rojas go to the service line for Castle Park, and he wants to try to ice her as best he can <laughs> as we've seen her come alive from the line. She can rally off enough points in a row to win this game. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea right here. It kind of, you know, make her think about it. It's, it's a key moment in the game. And I just think he wants to, you know, he senses this is going to be probably the final time he can talk to his team uh, until, the end of, until the end of this game. And right now he's just trying to reinforce what they've been doing well here in, in the fourth game and I guess get him focused and, and knowing exactly that this game is at hand. It's been tied all around, as we said. They've had, they've had the only three-point lead in this match, Southwest. So, the, you know, you got to reinforce that you can do it. Just got to play within yourselves and play smart because their teamwork has been excellent here in the fourth game. And actually, I got to give credit to both teams. They've, they've come out here and just had probably the, the best game itself here of, of the four games we've seen here this afternoon. It's a one-point Raider lead, 22-21. And it's Jocelyn Rojas at the service line for Castle Park. She serves it long. And the Raiders are two points away from sending this to a decisive fifth. Boy, she tried to hit that corner again. 
Just wasn't going to go. Smart reaction by Ibarra to let that go long for the point. And we've got a timeout taken by Aaron Parch and Castle Park. They trail by two late in game four. It's the Southwest Raiders 23, the Castle Park Trojans 21 on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Now remember, stay tuned for the playonsports.com postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And the pressure is on both of these teams as we enter the late, late, late stages of game four. The Southwest Raiders playing from behind most of this game, and then they took the lead. And now they lead by two, looking to send this to number five. Great serve by Jacobo, kept alive by the Trojans. Southwest will have a swing in it. They go to Ibarra. Ibarra with a big swing. Nice dig in the back row by Rojas. She'll get the swing in the back row. And she hits it long. Southwest has game point. We're one point away from going to five. Boy, Rojas again trying to get pinpoint accuracy. Just missed it. We're right on the, right on the, the back line here. And we, we saw it clearly. She just a little shy long on that, on that attempt. Garisa Abdin will come in to attempt to win game four. Set goes right side. Tipped by Jackson. And the Raiders should have a swing at it. Instead, they'll give a free ball. And the Trojans can't handle it. Garisa Abdin comes in, gets the kill to send it to a fifth and decisive game. 25-21. The Southwest Raiders take game four. Thomas, that was a, a very impressive comeback for Southwest. But you saw that happening all along. You knew we were going to five. <laughs> well, Bolina, I think, give him a lot of credit. That timeout, I think, really really kind of set that team on on its you know kind of get them set them in the right direction and they came out and they dominated that that entire that entire service right there to get that game so right now it's, it's you know it's all up for grabs here in the fifth and decider as uh, both teams they just did a coin toss well the fifth and deciding game will be played to 15 points so this one, it's super important, even more so than the others, to get out to an early lead. And you really don't have time to fall behind when you're playing only to 15. Every other game's been to 25. So then all of a sudden, you know, you go to half of that, and it'll determine who the winner is in this Metro Conference South Bay League matchup. Uh, just a, a huge game for both of these teams to try to get started on their league winning ways. And one of these teams is going to lose a close one. The other one's going to win a big one. What would this do for your team if you win a five-set victory? Well, I think for Southwest it's going to be a lot because you come out and really laid a dud in that first game, 25-11, and to come back and win the next three or four games, that to me is awfully impressive. And you got to give them credit as a team because there's been several points in this match where they look like they were, they were out of it. And, you know, that momentum, especially in game three, they were down double digits, came back, ultimately to lose by five. So they've really been down by a lot and shown a lot of, a lot of guts and, and just guts and pride to, to get back into this contest. So for me, that's going to be a key to, for, for, for me personally. If they win it, I think it's going to be a real big win for them. And for Castle Park, if they lose, they're going to think about all the missed opportunities that they had in this match to kind of put it away. They just could not get that one point to kind of solidify their lead and then, and then take it on home. And boy, missed opportunities, especially on the road, you always remember those. Well, the setter, a junior, Jessica Uloa for Southwest has kind of been the catalyst for this offense. She didn't get much of a chance there in game one to show what she could do because the passing on serve-receive was very poor. But since they've had opportunities, she's been distributing the ball to a lot of different players and getting open looks for her offensive players. And she's been a huge difference maker at the service line and at the net. Yeah, and, and I think for this final set, we're really going to need big plays out of Sampson and Jackson. they got to kind of dominate that front line and make sure every one of their shots is right over the net and, and, and really coming on top of the, uh, the Southwest player fast and hard so they don't have good reaction time to bring it back over for a volley. And the opposing setter, Maya Lytle, will get things started from the service line for Castle Park, and she puts some pressure on with that serve. 
But we're going to set outside. That's Rojas. Rojas taking a little something off of it. We haven't <laughs> seen much of that. And a big swing kept alive by the Trojans. Nice play by Jackson, keeping that ball in play. Set to the middle. And Devera with the swing. She'll get another opportunity at it, except this one, excuse me, goes out to Jacobo. She hits it long. Castle Park gets the point. And she altered her shot because Jackson came over from the center to try to come over on, onto her right to block that shot. And then that made her alter her shot. A down ball coming for the Trojans. It'll be a swing on the outside. Nice job by Sampson just to keep that ball alive. And what a overpass by Bolas. She put it right into the right spot in the center of the court. So tough to defend that if you're the Raiders. Yeah, nice place. Nice to see Sarah get back into this game. She's had a rough couple of games here, not doing much on the floor for Castle Park. And a nice play at the net by Abagat, but it's still kept alive by Southwest. Castle Park looking to take a commanding 3-0 lead here in game four, five. Excuse me. Swing by Abagat, kept alive by the Raiders. Nice dig in the back row by Sampson. They'll go outside to Rojas, who just tries to keep it alive. And the Trojans will try to give a free ball back. Instead, that one goes into the net. If you're Jocelyn Rojas, you want to have that one back. Yeah, too much time, I think, to, to react to that shot. And uh, she positioned herself nicely, but just a poor follow-through, put it right in the net for a point for Southwest. Southwest on the right-hand side of your screen, going right to left with the white jerseys, maroon numbering. The Castle Park Trojans in the black uniforms, white numbering, red trim. Jocelyn Rojas puts it away for the Trojans. They lead 3-1. to one. It's game five. We're playing to 15 as Castle Park won game one, 25-11. They lost game two. Southwest took that one, 25-22. It was Castle Park in the third, 25-20, and Southwest in the fourth, 25-21. And that's how we got here to game five where Castle Park leads at 3-1. to one. They'll give a free ball to the Raiders of Southwest. Set to the right side. Big swing by Cassandra Hernandez, and it goes long. Another point for Castle Park, a 4-1 to one lead here in Game 5. And since we're only playing to 15, that's a, a big mountain to climb for Southwest. Rojas serves that one into the net. And it's going to be a free point for Southwest. Not what you wanted to do there. Oh, man, no. You had momentum, and you really had this team on, on their heels. And you just kind of let that door, you keep it open once again. That's, they've been doing that all game long, the Trojans. The serve by Nicole Jacobo. Set's going to go outside. Big swing by Sampson. And Kanisha Sampson with a big side out for the Trojans. They lead it 5-2. to two. Great setup by Abigo to see Sampson as she came from the center, came over to her left to set her up, and she had a great kill in the middle of the court. The serve by Jackson goes into the net, and Southwest will get it back. Two missed serves in a row for Castle Park with a chance to try to go ahead here in game five. That's tough. Yeah, they just can't get that... that one serve over the net to kind of gain more, more momentum for themselves. Gabrielle Devera serving, set goes outside, Sampson, nice swing, kept alive by the Raiders. Ibarra, dug by Rojas, outside again, Sampson, this one takes a little something off, kept alive by the Raiders. Free ball, Kanisha Sampson with the pass, she's gonna get the ball again, she takes a big swing, great dig, again, Garisa Abden making plays for the Southwest defense. And we're going to have a set on the right-hand side. That was Janica Abagat kept alive, and Ibarra puts it away on the outside. What a rally. Yeah, once they made a couple of digs, you knew they were going to set up Southwest for Ibarra, and right there she got the point. A lot of movement on the other side for Castle Park, but she somehow found the open, uh, the open hole right there and put it on the ground for the point. Garisa Abden is keeping the ball in play. Tremendously for Southwest as Devera gets another service ace. Gabrielle Devera having a nice match. Wow. Three-point lead suddenly disappears for Castle Park, and now the momentum clearly on the side of the Raiders. And this serve goes long, but played by Legault. Free ball to the Raiders. They've got a chance to take the lead here in game five. Ibarra, Doug, 
Rojas, big swing from the back row, dug by Devara. 50-50 ball at the net. Ibarra swings again, again dug by Rojas, outside. Sampson, huge swing, again kept alive, Abden. But that one goes wide. Not much Garisa Abden could do about that one as Kanisha Sampson puts it down and stops the bleeding for the Trojans. Boy, give credit to Abden, this will make a nice, Two nice digs out of, out of those tough shots by Sampson. And a service ace for the Trojans, Janica Abagat. Castle Park trying to get something going here. Yeah, they're halfway to 15 now. Pass by Pato. And Ibarra is dug by Sampson. Sampson with another swing. This time it's oh. blocked, and we've got a... Net violation called against Kanisha Sampson, side out Southwest. Wow, that could have went either way. And uh, boy, big break for the Raiders right there. Because <laughs> I'm just thinking that ball, man, that could have went either way because both players were on top of that net. I'm assuming that his call just went to be for the first player that actually kind of hit the net first. The serve by Melanie Ramos is passed by Rojas. She's going to get a swing at it. She takes a hammer swing, dug by Pato. Set outside Ibarra. That's kept alive by Rojas. She's going to give a free ball back to the Raiders. Pato again. Outside Ibarra. Dig Castle Park. Sampson is dug. And a uh. swing and a miss by Ibarra there. That's such a tough ball to pass. It's coming over your head, trying to not only see where you are in the court, how are you going to get that ball inbound? She knew she was close to the net, but also try to swing and get that one. What a tough play by Ibarra. Yeah, too much to do in a short space. Great serve by Sampson. Kanisha Sampson coming alive. She's been the go-to offensive player for Castle Park, and she gets an ace. Her team leads by three, 9-6, timeout Bellino. Boy, and a big point right there for Sampson. The three-point lead is so big right now in this game. You got the momentum, you got the three-point lead, and right now that coaching staff for Castle Park has to implore them to get another point, make it four, because then it's awfully tough because you're asking uh, Southwest then to score the next nine points before you get to six. That's tough to do. Well, Kanisha Sampson has been responding all match long when her team needs a lift. It's been Rojas and Sampson, the go-to attackers for Castle Park. Her arm's got to be tired with all the swings she's taking today, <laughs> and big ones too, but she's at the service line trying to win a match for her team. Yeah, I guarantee she won't feel until after this match. Too, <laughs> too much adrenaline going. Nice pass by Pato, set to the middle. And a big kill out of the middle, Jacqueline Chalico. She puts it down, and a nice response by the Raiders. Every time you feel like Castle Park's going to get a little momentum going, the Raiders of Southwest respond. Boy, and give credit to, to, to Lico on that play because she set herself up perfectly to put a lot of, lot, of, lot, of, lot of speed on that shot and went over the net. It was just too, too hard to, to react to by, for Castle Park. The officials switching the ball here. So I agree with you, Brian. Boy, now it's only a two-point game. So it's a key point right there to get it for Southwest. Deira Ibarra will serve for oh. the Raiders. She serves that one into the net. But it's been a back and forth affair. You feel like if someone can get a couple in a row, then they'll be in good shape. 10 to seven, Castle Park leading Southwest in what's been a great volleyball match so far. Yeah, that time Ibarra on that miss, she kind of looked like got her, her foot kind of tangled together for that errant serve. Set outside, oh. Kobo puts it down. Authority on that one for the senior outside hitter and captain for Southwest. Yeah, she was a little bit quiet here in the in the in the final set. That time she came in with a big point right in front of Sarah Bolas. The serve on the way and a good one. Pass by Sampson. She's gonna take a swing from the back row. Doug. Kept alive, Hakobo on the outside. Nicole Hakobo responding with her back against the wall, puts two of the hardest hit balls we've seen away, and Southwest trails by only a point here in game five. Yeah, and I wonder if Kanisha Sampson, if she had to do it all over, might have let that ball go and see if it was going to hit out of bounds because she was right near the end line, 
She chose to hit the ball and it went off of her hands. Could not get a second shot off of it, but more importantly, cut that lead now to just one, as you said, Brian, here in the fifth set, 10-9, unbelievable. How about, how about the response by senior captain Nicole Hakobo taking the team on her shoulders and putting the ball away twice with authority? You needed that. You, they needed somebody to get them back into this game because and once again, we keep talking about it, Castle Park looked like they were about ready to take, maybe finally control this match and, and take it home for the five set win, but they keep letting the KDS cannot close the door on Southwest. You keep letting them hang around, you're gonna lose a five setter. The serve by Chilico, and it's a good one. The Trojans having some trouble with it, and it's an ace. We're all tied up at 10, of course we are. <laughs> Again, Lita right there, try to, try to set it up for, for a good kill. Did not get a good shot off, and it went right off her hand and out of bounds for another point. Jacqueline Chilico serving again. Nice pass by Rojas, set outside to Rojas, and she tips this one, and it's kept alive again. Jacobo keeping it alive for the Raiders. Three times, it's oh. still in the air. What a play by Southwest, twice out of the net. Somehow they get it over, and now they have a free ball. Devera with that save. Hakobo, and she hits it into the net. She'll want to have that one back. The senior, who had just been on fire, hits that one into the net for a point, Castle Park. Yeah, footwork not good that time by Hakobo, and that was a reason for the, for the point going to Castle Park. Maya Lida serving. Free ball coming, blocked, and that was Janica Abba got in there. Got to have a timeout here for Coach Bellino. And Southwest looks a little bit stunned after Castle Park quickly with those couple of points right after the Raiders were back into it. Yeah, it seemed like they got kind of, I hate to use the analogy, but kind of got punched in the face right there. So good timeout here. Settle this team down with Coach Bellino. Uh, right now, again, you know, now a two-point lead is so crucial here this late in the game. Folks, we want to remind you to stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. We're in the midst of a five-set thriller at Southwest High School Metro Conference South Bay League Volleyball between the Castle Park Trojans and Southwest Raiders service ace Maya Lida. And the Trojans are two points away from taking it home. Wow, big serve there by Lida. You could have sent it when she came on the court. She was going to do that, and she hit it. Lida again. Free ball for the Trojans. They've got to take advantage here. They go outside. Rojas kept alive Ibarra. Outside. Jacobo puts it down. Nicole Jacobo responding every time they need it. The senior captain leading the Raiders. And that time she put the ball where she wanted to do earlier. Big point right there. Two points down, and they got one of their top servers going. The serve on the way. Swing by Rojas. Kept alive. Nice dig. Pado set right side. And a kill from the right side, Janica Abagat, and the Castle Park Trojans are one point away from taking the match. Yeah, once once Abagat got it over Devara, that was going to be an easy point. Devara tried to time her kill back, couldn't get it, and here's the match point. Rojas serving for the match, service ace, and the Castle Park Trojans win it. Fitting way for it to end with Jocelyn Rojas getting a service ace. 15-11, the final score here in game five, and the Castle Park Trojans take it three games to two. What a match. Yeah, big sigh of relief for Castle Park. They got the job done, and but give, give credit there for Rojas. He really came up big in that final part of that game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stay tuned to playonsports.com for our post-game coverage. We'll wrap up all the action in our post-game show, and we'll have an interview with our player of the game. That's coming up in just a few moments. Once again, the Castle Park Trojans have defeated the Southwest Raiders three games to two on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports.
We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard uh, graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Welcome back to the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. I'm standing here with our player of the game, Jocelyn Rojas of the Castle Park Trojans, a 3-2 winner on the road against the Southwest Raiders. And Jocelyn, going into a five-set match like this, how important is it to come away with a victory on the road? It's really important because we've got, we're undefeated, undefeated still, and... We didn't want to lose because we are trying to get Banner since it's like we're used like all seniors and we're trying to get Banner and yeah. Well, you guys did a great job in game one. You came out and just dominated, especially you at the service line. You served over 10 points in game one. Uh, and what was going through your mind when you're back at the service line and you're going through a run like that, 10 straight points? Well, I want to kept on going, but then I don't know. It's just the nerves and like all the spectators and everybody yelling at you. And just everything that you guys so frustrated, tired, and yeah. Well, you guys were dominant in game one. Did you feel like maybe in game two when they came back, did you take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit? Or what was the difference in game two to get Southwest back into this one? I don't know. It was just that I, I think it was that we thought we were doing, like, really good. And then they just, like, got momentum, and they started going, and we just got really confident, I guess. 
Yeah. Well, playing with an injury, is that something that's tough for you? Have you are used to that kind of thing or playing yeah. hurt or is this a new thing for you with that injured wrist? It's a new thing, but I mean, it's we do it for the team. We're trying to get better. We're trying to do good. So we got to do it. <laughs> well, uh, just a great match. Uh, great attacking in the front row and then at the service line, you were dominant. Going back there with match point on the line and you're serving, what's going through your mind right before you got that match winning ace? I was really nervous. I thought I wasn't going to get it over because everybody kept on yelling at me. I was, and then the score was tight. And like, if I had missed a serve, they were going to get back to us. And I was just really nervous. I well, wasn't expecting it. <laughs> congratulations once again to Jocelyn Rojas, our PlayOnSports.com player of the game. The Castle Park Trojans, a 3-2 winner over the Southwest Raiders. Folks, don't go anywhere. The PlayOnSports.com postgame show will continue in just a moment. Get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Welcome back to the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. The Castle Park Trojans have defeated the Southwest Raiders three games to two. And Thomas, this game was back and forth the entire time. Castle Park dominant, a 25-11 winner in game one. We kind of thought it was going to go like that the rest of the match, but Southwest responded, winning game two, and uh, it went on to five. We knew these teams were evenly matched coming in, and uh, Castle Park comes away with that five-set victory on the road. How important is that to get off uh, that kind of start in league play on the road against the rival? Hey, extremely, because I, I, I got a little glimpse of their, of their post-game talk from their coaching staff, and that's exactly what they stress. It was like a big road win, and they want to emphasize if you play hard for, for five sets, you're going to win. And that's the kind of mindset you need now to go on further on in this season, and especially with, with tough road games in this league. And, and, and that's exactly what they want. They got a big road win. And you're going to see a lot of confidence, I think, for Castle Park in their next match. Well, one of the areas that we knew was going to be huge coming into this game was the service and serve receive. And Castle Park had just enough to win the service battle. And uh, and that seemed to be the difference here in the match tonight. Yeah, a I mean, big big... Big time service there by Rojas at the end of the game. She was kind of, you know, she, she had a strong first game, lost a little bit on, on the second and third, came back a little bit in the fourth, but in the fifth game, especially in, in that in that last in that last quarter of, of the match, she was spot on perfect, and she came up with big shot, big shot after big shot. This is tremendous in the afternoon for her. Well, Jocelyn Rojas was our player of the game. Also, Kanisha Sampson had a great match. Mm -hmm. And Maya Lida had another one as well. For the Southwest Raiders, they had a great performance from the senior outside, Hakoba, the captain, who really came in and uh, when her team needed her the most, she delivered. Yeah, and, and again, you know, take, take it from, the, uh, from that aspect of them. Uh, you lose a tough home match, but more importantly, you come back, especially after that dud of a first game, 25-11, and then you, you, you kind of start off the second game, lackluster, uh, coach, coach, the coaching staff called the timeout, got right, right in their faces, and it kind of like woke them up. And then they played a great match. And you just gotta build off of that. I, I think the, the key for them is is getting off to better starts in games because it seems like you can't always come back trailing. If they play like they did where when it was tight and close, especially in games of uh, four and five, uh, they're gonna have a great year. And and you can see that chemistry building on their staff. And when we talked to when when they played in that tournament in the beginning of the year. That's what they build on, and they're going to go with it. And, again, this, this is, as we said uh, during the match, this is a tough league, and every game seems like it's, it's going to be tooth and fight all the <laughs> way. doesn't matter where it's played. As, as, 
as we've seen now in two weeks, you know, the road team comes in the, to this home environment and really plays very well, does not get intimidated at all by, by, the, by the crowd. Well, an exciting match, and Castle Park comes away with the victory, uh, a big win for them. But if you're Southwest, you've got to be happy with the performance that you showed, especially after struggling so much in game one, coming back, forcing it to five games. Just an overall great match, especially as a, a spectator. Yeah, what a, you know, what a exciting, I think, I don't think either one of us could honestly say after that first game that we were going to be here for five, for five games. But thankfully, it did turn out like that, and we had that barn burner, and boy, it came down literally to the last couple of shots in this match. Well, folks, that's going to do it for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. Once again, the Castle Park Trojans have defeated the Southwest Raiders 3-2 to two on PlayOnSports.com. For our producer, Chris Cashman, our videographer, Megan Coffey, and my partner, Thomas Conroy, I'm Brian Vilvin saying so long, and we hope you'll join us next time on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort.